I often get asked, what happens when two narcissists get together in a relationship? Can it work long term? Can it be a successful relationship? First, let me just say that the answer to this question depends on your definition of a successful relationship. If your definition of a successful relationship is staying together forever at all costs, regardless of happiness and mental health, then yes, absolutely, two narcissists can and do get married and stay together. But if by a successful relationship you mean a happy, healthy, loving relationship where both partners trust, respect, communicate, and negotiate their wants and needs, then no. That said, there are three key factors that help determine how a relationship between two narcissists will play out. Before I give you these three important factors, I'm Lise LeBlanc and I post videos weekly on topics related to personality disorders, stress, grief, relationships, and other mental health issues. This content is for informational purposes only, and if you find this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. So let's jump right in. Narcissists often end up together through a process of assortative mating, which is a well-researched theory that states that we don't select partners at random. We sort and select based on a process of either positive assortment, where we see characteristics that are similar to our own, or through a process of negative assortment, where we seek characteristics that are dissimilar to ours. Maybe it's characteristics that we desire, maybe it's characteristics that we're familiar with, or that meet certain needs. In the case of negative assortative mating, this can explain why a narcissist may seek someone who is codependent and ready and willing to be of service to them. In the case of positive assortative mating, it explains how two narcissists attract each other. Okay, so first important factor to consider when it comes to the success of a relationship between two narcissists is the type of narcissism. Are both partners grandiose narcissists? Are they both vulnerable narcissists? Or is one partner a grandiose narcissist and the other a vulnerable narcissist? Or are they more hybrid narcissists, which are the type of narcissists that consistently show characteristics of both the overt and covert narcissism. And I will talk about all of these different combinations later in this video, as there is one coupling that does tend to work out better than the others. The second important factor to consider is whether one or both partners have co-occurring mental disorders. If there is addiction, antisocial tendencies, or other serious mental health issues, then it is extremely extremely unlikely that they will experience anything but an incredibly destructive and damaging relationship, regardless of the type of narcissism. The third factor is the level of narcissism. Are we talking about full-fledged narcissists? In other words, would they qualify for a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder? Or are we talking about people with narcissistic tendencies or a narcissistic personality style? If both partners have a narcissistic personality style versus being a full-fledged narcissist, then they may have hope for a more successful relationship, especially if the partners meet the three following conditions. Number one, they are self-aware. Number two, they have at least some degree of empathy. Number three, they are willing to admit that they have a problem and have a commitment to work on that problem. These types of narcissists, although very rare, do exist. But the chances of both partners meeting these criteria um, is highly improbable. I have, however, met some self-aware narcissists that wanted to change. And I'm not talking here about people with full-blown NPD or malignant narcissists. I'm simply referring to those who are higher on the narcissistic spectrum than most people. So when two people with a narcissistic style end up together, and they often do thanks to this process called positive assortative mating that we talked about earlier, the two narcissists can get along well as long as they have common interests and goals that are not competing. 
and as long as they can learn to recognize and negotiate their needs. And this won't be easy because the narcissistic person doesn't realize that the world doesn't revolve around them and that people were not put on this earth just to please them. And now you've got two people like this in the relationship who don't naturally recognize or respect each other's needs due to these low levels of empathy. So these relationships can be very conflict oriented and they often end up poorly. But one positive thing that can happen when the personal agendas are aligned and if they learn to cooperate, they can actually help each other achieve their goals and have a relationship that is satisfying to them. Okay, so now let's move on and talk about the scenario when two full-fledged narcissists get together. Almost all narcissistic relationships start out with a strong and intense, fast-paced love bombing stage. And then within a year, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes less, it crashes and burns. So it's not uncommon for the narcissist to move in together, get engaged, get married, uh, plan a family in a very short time span before even really knowing each other. And that's because the narcissist is not in love with the other person. They are in love with a fantasy image of their ideal partner that they've created in their own mind. While the love hormones are strong, they are completely high on their own brain chemistry and buying into their own illusions. But as the relationship matures and those love hormones dies, die down, things start to get real and it's like a switch goes off in their mind and poof, they're done. They're disconnected almost instantly. But they don't always leave the relationship. First, let's talk about two covert narcissists. Because the covert narcissist is emotionally unstable, insecure, hypersensitive, pessimistic, antagonistic, uh, plagued with anxiety and depression and see themselves as a victim, they are often looking for a hero, someone to save them, someone to feel sorry for them, which is why they can often end up with someone who is codependent. But on those occasions where they fool each other into believing that they will be able to meet each other's needs and they end up with another covert narcissist, it will be a very, very negative and miserable relationship. Of course, in the beginning of the relationship, the covert narcissists are like chameleons, appearing to be the perfect mates for each other. And they'll mirror each other's positive qualities, say all the right things, and you know, make each other feel extra special, relating, appearing really sensitive to each other's needs, to each other's pain and suffering. But as time goes on, it becomes like a competition of who is the biggest victim. Both desperately want to be in that victim spotlight and they constantly try to get sympathy and empathy from the other, but neither has any true empathy. So instead, they argue, criticize, demean, and nitpick each other until they both become so resentful, so disappointed, that they start avoiding each other. When two covert narcissists stay together, they either argue to death or they completely stonewall each other, live in opposite ends of the house, sleep in different beds, and really only communicate when other people are around. Two covert narcissists stay together usually because they're too insecure to leave or they stay for the kids, for image, reputation, financial reasons, or just to avoid the fears and uncertainty involved in starting over. Neither sees themselves as part of the problem and they always keep the blame on the other person, often involving friends and family in quiet smear campaigns against each other. And as you can imagine, this is a very, very lonely and dysfunctional relationship. Okay, so let's move on to uh, when a grandiose narcissist is paired with a vulnerable narcissist. And this is a pairing where the vulnerable narcissist gets a taste of his or her own medicine. Because the grandiose narcissist is resistant to criticism, the covert narcissist's insults, criticisms, stonewalling, and other methods of manipulation don't really touch them. It doesn't really affect them. The grandiose narcissist is hearing only what they want to hear. They're optimistic, arrogant, lacking empathy, and they're filled with these fantasies of power, wealth, and success, and nothing the covert narcissist says can really 
touch that. And so they're shielded from the constant criticism and nitpicking. But the grandiose narcissist behavior, on the other hand, will really bother the um, vulnerable narcissist. The grandiose narcissist will quickly zone into the covert partner's vulnerabilities and chip away ruthlessly, sometimes quite abusively, at their insecurities. The covert narcissist is fragile and can't tolerate the grandiose narcissist's abrasive nature, their demands and mental emotional manipulation. So they've met their match and beyond. The grandiose narcissist will usually leave this pairing because they have no patience for this kind of misery. The only time they'll stay is if there's a very compelling personal agenda. For example, if the covert narcissist has money and a lifestyle that the grandiose narcissist wants, they may stay, but they'll be living a double life. They'll be getting their narc supply on the side. And usually the covert narcissist over time will disengage and again they end up living separate lives just joined by a small thread or a thin thread. And in my opinion this is the worst of all of the pairings. So let's talk now about when two grandiose narcissists get together. So again this relationship probably more than any of the others starts out with massive fireworks and no matter how long their you know string of unhealthy relationships is the grandiose narcissist always starts out thinking and truly believing that they've met their soulmate and you know that only lasts for a while until they disconnect emotionally because again they're not capable of true intimacy they are all about the highs so when that relationship starts hitting the mature phase then they start looking for new supply Again, doesn't necessarily mean they'll leave the relationship. If they have compelling reasons to stay, they may end up together forever. So they need to see that personal value in staying in the relationship. And I mean, we all do to some degree, but with the grandiose narcissist or any narcissist, it's really all about what they want to need. In many ways, the relationship becomes like a business arrangement where in public, they are the image of perfection, taking perfect photos for social media and giving each other affection and attention. But behind closed doors, they have their own separate lives that really only intersect when their needs dictate it. Grandiose narcissists who stay together almost always are hiding, lying and deceiving each other. So in the beginning of these relationships, there's often a lot of conflict as the love bombing stage ends because they're both fighting to be in the spotlight and fighting for power. But over time, they become more indifferent and the relationship becomes transactional. I have on occasion seen grandiose narcissistic couples who are very, very um, social and because they're extroverted they may participate in many activities together which they're genuinely interested in and genuinely enjoy and when there's no major competition this can keep them together it's like if two parasites are in competition only one can triumph for example if two tapeworms infect the same host either one will kill the other and take over or they'll team up and boost the their influence over their host's behavior. So as long as the two grandiose narcissists are not in competition with each other and see each other as useful to advance their own personal agendas, then they can stay together, but not necessarily in a way that most people would think of as a successful long-term relationship. And they do love to put on a good show. So as an outsider, you might even be jealous of their relationship, thinking that the love and affection they show in public is actually happening in private. And that's what they want. They want to be envied. But the grandiose narcissist is always fantasizing and always looking for the bigger, better prize. If there is no common goal or objective binding them together, the grandiose narcissist will jump ship 
They have a tendency to go from one relationship to the next, um, cheating along the way, um, and just moving really quickly. So like I said before, they'll get engaged within a couple of weeks, maybe spend a lot of money, have grand adventures, and then just move on to the next person. And when they do get married, they have no problem getting divorced when it's not working for them anymore. And this can be very, very messy. But the, at least in this relationship, there are positives because the grandiose narcissists, they're both partners are resistant to criticism. And so they can have these, you know, explosive fights and then get over it really quickly. And because they both want to be successful, they both want to be admired. If they can figure out how to work together, they can use each other to their advantage. And so when this happens, it can be what they would consider as a successful, satisfying relationship. As for the hybrid narcissist, those that hug the line and consistently show characteristics of both types of narcissism, overt and covert, uh, in this case, it's a little trickier and really depends on which of the characteristics that they're showing and how that aligns with their partner's personal agenda and obviously all of the other factors that we talked about, such as co-occurring disorders and so on. But in any kind of pairing, when it comes to narcissists, their agenda is really the only one that matters, which is why the likelihood of a successful relationship is extremely low. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos on narcissistic personality disorder.